Howdy howdy folks, Jim Molly again, and um, yeah, this is probably not going to come out on Thursday, this is probably out on Friday, early hours of Friday now, because I've had a mare of a day trying to figure out how to get this recording to work, but, but, this should be a Thursday thing, and this is Convert This, which is where I take a non-RPG um, project uh, property and try and turn it, or at least inspire you on how you could turn it into a tabletop RPG project. This is kind of half a tutorial series, half a fan wankery series, and half me being bad at remembering how many halves are in a whole. So today I have chosen The Legend of Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. It is the sequel to the original Zelda. It came out in 1988 on the NES, and um, it's a very different game to the original Legend of Zelda. It starts off as a side-scroller, and then as you leave the first room, it turns into a top-down game and then you go back into being a side-scroller. For a lot of people, it's not their favourite Zelda game, and I kind of understand it. It is a bit of a departure, but I chose it because it's not going to have that kind of all-encompassing nostalgia factor that, say, the original Legend of Zelda or Link to the Past will have for a lot of people, or, God forbid, Ocarina of Time. Oh, Lord. So, um, big, 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 big concepts for this whole thing is... And this, is, this will carry on throughout the whole series, regardless of what property I choose, is number one, one-to-one -one conversions do not work. You cannot take a game that is not a tabletop RPG and turn it into a tabletop RPG and have it remain, keep that like perfect granularity. And I'm sure there's someone who's going to be like, well, actually, but for the most part, you cannot get a perfect one-to-one -one conversion just simply from the from the wiggle in real time to the back and forth that a good tabletop rpg has you can't do it so don't try and do that what you want to do is you want to take what is the most important kind of feel of the source material and take that and try and transfer that into your game so um played a bit of Adventure of Link, went through the um, fan wiki and all that. Like one of the big reasons for choosing Zelda as well is because there are fan wikis galore. Um, the Zelda wiki on Gamepedia is what I'm currently, I currently have on this screen here. And um, I just kind of using that to jog my memory. But there's, there's lore galore. So you can track down every little widget and doodad that you need to place. That's one handy thing about using this kind of material is that you've got that immediacy of being able to collate large amounts of information. Um, but yeah, so, the, the, the feel I would want to grab from The Adventure of Link 2, and you might want to grab something else, but this is my feel, um, is that the core of the game is exploration, but there is risk from fast-moving enemies. So you travel through very landscapes, deserts, forests, swamps, mountains, uh, the Valley of Death, gorges, all of that lot. So you, you have a very expansive environmental world with kind of sparse points of light towns and between that you have very fast moving groups of enemies that can surprise your players easily so the players have that feeling of like oh shit oh shit gotta keep moving gotta keep moving however even the towns themselves are not necessarily 100 percent safe and friendly the towns contain resources that are useful to the players and are often needed to advance the plot but they're hidden, so players have to figure out who knows what information, or explore around, or maybe even go to a different town to find out exactly who to talk to in the town that they're currently trying to investigate. So that gives the players kind of a push-pull, that they know they're not just going to walk in and be like, what up? I'm the hero of time. Look at my dick. And get all the stuff they need. They have to go and talk and, and find out what's going on. Um, one of the big things, one of the big, 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 big things I like about Adventure of Link is as far as I'm aware, it's the only Zelda game where you actually start with the items you need to finish the game. You start with the six crystals that you have to insert into the six palaces to unlock the Triforce to do the final bit. So you have that moment with the players where you give them the MacGuffin at the beginning of the game. And to stop them from kind of going off plot, they've always got that MacGuffin to look back on, which can be really handy if you've got players who like to, say, wander off to a random, a different part of the continent because they fucked up where they were originally. So you've got, <clears throat> sorry, you've got a wide, diverse environment with danger, with 
intelligent, fast enemies in between those areas of safety, which are represented by the towns. Now, the big thing about the dungeons is they have to go and assault the dungeons. And in Zelda 2, one of the things that stuck with me when I was a kid was the enemies were actually quite intelligent. There was like a high attack, low attack, high defend, low defend dynamic in the fights. So the fights did feel very back and forth, waiting for a gap, you know, getting in there. It was less hack and slash. So I would run it that even the kind of dumb enemies are smarter than the average bear. But the other thing Zelda had, which I liked, was that when you're on the world map and groups of enemies appear and try and attack you, if you can get them to bump into you on a road, you're safe. There's just an empty screen. So I would include some way of, even though the enemies are intelligent, there would be a way of avoiding them if you know how. So part of it is also like an investigation of the players collating information and learning what makes the enemies tick so that they can use that to their advantage. Say, um, moblins don't like citrus smells. So if the players go to ground and spread citrus smell around, moblins go, don't like it, and they leave. Um, the other nice thing is if you're homebrewing this from square one, rather than using a pre-existing system and just, you know, filing the serial numbers off, the enemy pool is fairly small but reasonably diverse. So you've got a good exercise when it comes to your your um, games design skills without being a too overloaded. Because what a lot of newbies find is they try and do, say, <clears throat> every enemy in Final Fantasy and then realise, oh crap, that is like a million, million enemies. And they just go... Pfft. And, you know, perfect enemy of done. Um, yeah, so. It's, so the things I would push for is, like I was saying, lots of exploration, lots of figuring out what makes enemies ticks, where the things are that you need, what the dungeons have. Because the items in the game as well, they solve problems, but not like in other Zelda games. They don't give you like a hook shot. Instead, generally the items you retrieve from dungeons solve an environmental problem, which then allows you to advance to the next set of towns to go to the dungeon. The actual tools you get in the towns, you get the spells that you use and you get the, the things you use there. Um, in regards to that as well, actually, for player options, Link can use magic as well as melee, and he can choose what he buffs. So I would allow everyone to be a caster as well as a, a warrior, and they're like the, the the tribe of Link. I don't know. They, they, they share a bloodline in order to be considered eligible for this quest, say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I am just spitballing ideas. I would love to say, oh, but there's a document down below. But kind of the best document I can give you in regards to not getting too hung up and not trying to do a one-to-one -one comparison, I wrote an article called... Um, just run Die Hard, and I will link it down below. I will put it up on my Patreon as a free thing that anyone can see. You don't have to back my Patreon, but if you'd like to, you know, buy my stuff, pay my rent. Um, but I'll link it down below. You can read it, and it's basically how you can take the Die Hard films and use them as an easy recipe to run a game when you've been caught out on a night where your prep maybe not isn't the best. Um, oh, sorry, one last thing. In regards to system, because I have no doubt people will wonder what system to use. Um, I don't think it matters hugely. It's whatever system you are most comfortable with working within. Um, one of the reasons why people really like D20 is because it has a very rigid structure and there's a lot of homebrew out there. So you can go digging and find potentially someone who's already done Zelda monsters or whatever and you're just kind of using that to pad out the bones of the story that you've created um, personally hmm, I'd probably use AEG's roll and keep system from the original first edition 7c and Legend of the Five Rings first through fourth I want to say maybe first through fifth edition where you have a pool of d10s uh, which you roll and you keep a number of those d10s from your from that pool so it means that you end up with a nice kind of bell curve which is adjustable but not too um yeah so that's probably what i would use personally um i'll be honest while i've been doing this video and while i've been researching for it i have actually thought man this this would make quite a cool little thing so no promises but 
I might see if I can hack together something that I can throw up. Um, and if I do, it will either update down below or I'll throw it out on my social medias or whatever. I'm GM Moly basically everywhere. So if you can find me, I'll probably be posting it around. Um, yeah, that's it basically. Don't get too hung up on things. The main thing to focus on is the feel of the game. I will go into some of the more mechanical granular aspects of things in new other videos but the big thing for this the takeaway is capture the feel figure out what is the core feeling of the game and then try and emulate that rather than trying to do a perfect one-to-one -one comparison so yeah um anything else support my patron like favorite subscribe hit the bell is it i'm i'm bad at this part um oh join my discord there'll be a link down below um we have a nice community we like to chat. We do games design discussion and have dumb memes and stuff like that. And yeah. Oh, I finished recording the final episode for season one for my podcast. So that is being edited as we speak. And that will be going up over the next couple of weeks. So if you would like to give Aetherstone a listen to, if you like flying skyships and, and um, hijinks and magical technology, uh, I've got two lovely players, Helen and Heather. Please, please, please give that a listen. Links down below. Other than that, yeah, thanks for watching. Next video will be coming out on Tuesday. It'll be a Q&A video. So if you have any questions for the Q&A, please leave them down below. Also on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, any of those, just ask away. I'll no doubt have a post up to try and grab some questions and that lot. But other than that, thank you for watching. Um, keep having fun. Keep being awesome. Bye-bye.